All right, so I figured out an insane way to make timelines in Illustrator, and now you're gonna learn how to do this. So the most important part is my magical Adobe Illustrator timeline creator. And what this thing does is it takes dates that you type in, I already put together one, um, and it converts it to points on a scatter plot that you then use to anchor your circles or your bars or whatever you wanna put um, on your timeline. So um, let's start, we're just gonna use this data. You can read the steps in order to see how to put your own data here, um, but we are going to have a timeline of different shipwrecks uh, that killed a certain amount of people. And we're gonna start our map, our timeline on 1825, January 1st, and we are going to end it on 100 years later for 1925. So we're gonna get the Titanic in here and we're gonna see how the Titanic compares to other things. So here's what we do, first off, we are going to be anchoring all of our points on a scatter plot. So we make a real nice tall one here. You drag it down and you paste in all of these automatically generated points here, point A and point B. Paste it in there, there's a little extra space up there. Doesn't matter, sounds good. So these little dots here, each one of those is going to be a point on our timeline. But our timeline is going up and down right now. We need it to go side to side. So we do object, transform, rotate. You'd think you'd rotate it 90 degrees, but that will make it shift to the uh, counterclockwise. You want it to be going clockwise, so we're going to do 270 degrees, also known as negative 90 degrees. All right, this is going to be the basis of our layout. I'm going to shift my artboard so it encompasses a little bit more space. All right, now we need to put some stuff onto here. Um, we have a few different options. I'm going to go with circles this time. So, Right here, we put in the value of how many people died in each one of these ship disasters, which automatically filled in some stuff over here. So we are going to cut and paste this column, these two columns over here, into a pie graph. So we're gonna drag, uh, we're gonna make a new layer first, actually, sorry. All right, we're gonna call this circles, and we're gonna draw out our pie graph paste them all in there, and there we go. We got a ton of circles. Now what we have to do is move these circles onto these dots up here. But before we do that, we're going to have to object, ungroup, ungroup, ungroup. That warning was saying it's not gonna be a chart anymore, so we can't do charty things to it, but that's fine by us. We're gonna do the same thing up here. Object, ungroup, contains a graph. Do we care? It's fine. Ungroup, ungroup, ungroup. All right, great. Make this a little bit bigger. And now we're gonna get rid of everything we don't need. So we don't need these axes. We don't need any of this stuff here. All right, so the first point over here is going to be our um, start date here. So we had a custom start date, which is 1-1-1825, custom end date 1-1-1925. So we're actually going to take this first dot here, this first circle, which is the Lady of the Lake in 1833. And we're going to move that to here. Actually, I'm going to move all of these up just so that it's a little bit a little bit easier to deal with. All right. This guy goes here. Make sure you are centering it on that dot. Centering on the dot. Centering on the dot. Nope. Now these ones here are close together, so you have to make sure that you get it on the right dot. Now there are three here that are very close together. See, so one, two, three, one, two, three. One, we could throw in a little bit of opacity, but we'll survive. Actually, we probably won't survive. I'm gonna click right, well, no. I'm gonna hold down um, Alt and click this layer and it will select everything in the layer, and then I'm gonna go opacity, 50%. So you can see, yes, they are lined up um, on the right circles, maybe. Let's be honest, I'm not sure. Seems like this should be over a little bit. All right, so. Now we have all of those little dots in there that we probably, well, let's, let's not get rid of them. First, we'll hold down Alt, and we'll make all of these circles red. Change it to RGB so the red shows up. Now we'll make it not so gross of a red. 
All right, but now they have the stroke on them that we don't like. We're going to hold Alt again. We're going to get rid of that stroke, stroke down to zero. And we're going to say no stroke. All right, so those are looking good. We have to get rid of all of these down there. Now we have all of these little squares here that probably should just be lines. So, or not lines, it should probably be circles. So I'm going to select them all in here. And then I'm going to go to uh, Object, wait, Effect, uh, Convert to Shape, Ellipse. And then I'm going to set them to an absolute size. I'm going to preview. I'm going to make them probably one millimeter by one millimeter. Now let's do that again, maybe two by two. Something so that we can see them a little bit, but they're not distracting. That looks pretty good. We're going to take this path. Make it a bit thinner. Well, we're going to have to grab them all individually. So we can do that down here. These are all of the lines that are between each of these points. We could have drawn a new line, which is normally what I do, um, but we'll survive. Yeah, we'll keep it at one. All right, we'll label this 1825. Make that font a little bit bigger. Copy, paste, 1925. Now maybe we want to call some of these out. Um, this one here is pretty big. Uh, what's going to happen is, let's say we stroke this. Let's say we say we're going to go for a stroke of two. There's this strange line that goes down in the middle. And that's because this is a circle, or this is a pie. It's a pie with one slice in it. So what we have to end up doing is delete that line in the middle so that it doesn't show up whenever we highlight. Um, so maybe we'll also do this big one over here, um, which is the Titanic. We'll give it a little stroke. We'll get rid of that point in the middle. This one, a little stroke. Get rid of the point in the middle. Now, I would like these outlines to be black and not gray. The reason why they're gray is because um, if we go to the appearance window here, the opacity is 50%. What we want is a 50% opacity on the fill, but a 100% opacity on the stroke. So we're going to change this opacity to be 100. We're going to change this opacity to be 50. So they blend in with the other ones. And now we have a black outline. Beautiful. So now we can call attention to each of these. We'll pull up a line here. We'll pull up a line here. We'll pull up a line here. And we'll say this one's the Titanic. Um, let's see, when did that happen? April 15th. April 15th, 1912. Uh, the Titanic, which was a luxury, uh, luxury liner. And over 1,500 people died. So we'll make this one a little bit smaller. Maybe we'll pull the name of the boat. Now the one just before it. Uh, no, that's the Kichimaru? No, maybe we didn't have that one. Uh, the General Slocum in 1904. So we're going to go... June 15th, 1904, General Slocum, which was a excursion steamer. And 1,021 people died. We'll right align all of that. Pull another one over here for the Sultana, which was a boiler explosion. It was a steamboat. And 1,547 people died. And that was April 27th, 1865. So there we go. Um, we have an annotated timeline. Uh, and we can call that the Titanic wasn't that big of a deal. Because apparently it wasn't. Hey, clickbait, right? Can't beat that.